Welcome back fellow coding facilitators, Jared O'Leary here with Boot Up. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can recreate the under the sea project that was originally for Scratch Stinger, but do it inside of Scratch. So let's take a look at the original project. So this one was using the green flag. It would cause it to do all of this stuff. So we have our sprite moving up and down. We have our diver, it's got my face on it. We've got some fish spinning around. We've got our star, etc. So let's take a look at what this looks like inside of Scratch. So we press the green flag and it's the same idea. Some slightly different sprites. So instead of a seahorse, we have our jellyfish. Instead of a big whale, we've got our shark. We still have our diver that is spinning. We've still got our spinning starfish, etc. So let's take a look at the code for this. So we click see inside. And again, like some of the other projects, we have two variations to show you two different ways that you can do this. So one is using the icons. So this is causing the diver to move to the right and turn. <laughs> and because I uh, had it start off kilter, he's off, so we want to start that way. Okay. So this is how we can replicate the same kind of code that you saw in the original Scratch Junior project. Or if you wanted to, you could simply use this kind of code. So we have our diver right here. And if we run this code, it's going to make it teleport all the way to the left side like this. And then it's going to take 10 seconds to glide all the way across. So this is another way that you could use the divers code to do something. So it goes all the way over and then it teleports. Now the other set of code in here is the code that makes it so that it spins every now and then. So it runs both of these in parallel just like that. Okay. So this is pretty easy to do because when you glide the dry, <laughs> the diver over here, it automatically updates these numbers. So we can say, start here, go to here, take however long to glide all the way over here. We just move it and it automatically changes these coordinates and we just tell it how long to do this. So it's going to start here and it's going to take five seconds to go to wherever we dragged it to. Okay. So that's a pretty easy thing that kids can do because they don't necessarily need to understand what's going on with X and Y coordinates. Now the starfish is pretty simple, it's just when it's forever uh, going to turn when you press a green flag. Now there are two different ways for the shark. One again is using the icons and this makes it so that it moves right forever. And when it gets to the other side, it will automatically teleport to the left and it'll just keep doing this. So this is the same code that we had for our whale. However, if we'd like to, we could also use this kind of shark where we press the green flag and it's going to move to the right and then make it go faster. And when it gets to the edge, it's going to bounce. So it's going to go back and forth, left and right. Okay. So this is a little bit more complicated. However, it gives you more control over this. So for example, if we wanted our shark to move really fast, we can change this number to a very large number. Or if we wanted our shark to move very slow, we can change this. So it gives you more control than you could with just the icons that we have right here. Okay. Cause this won't change speed. It only changes how much. So how far it moves to the right. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the other fish that are in here. So we've got our icon based fish. So again, this one is just moving to the right. And we have our motion one. This one is just moving to the right and the left, but it will bounce. Okay, same like uh, similar to the shark. Okay, so we've got this other fish here. This one's running in parallel. So it's moving right and up and to the right. So it's making kind of zigzag up and down. When it gets to the edges, it will teleport to the opposite side. Okay. Now where that's different is this other version of the sprite. It is going to get to the edge and then teleport by going to here. Okay. So, oh, and the last sprite on here is our jellyfish. So there was in the original one a seahorse, but in this one, it's just a jellyfish. Okay. So all the same ideas that you could do in Scratch Junior, you can do in Scratch, but there are many different ways you can do it. Again, if you want to have it so that it's simpler, use the icon blocks. And if you want to have it so you have more control over it, then use the actual motion blocks. So that way you can change the speed, for instance, the speed of this shark. Cool. So that's how you can recreate the under the sea project inside of Scratch. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let us know something that you learned or created in the comments below.
And make sure to subscribe, like, and check out the links in the description for even more free resources, such as videos, free lesson plans, and our podcast.